we are going in. All right, welcome everyone. So today we have something long overdue on this car, which is uh, a problem that I inherited when I bought the car. Um, the valve cover breather pieces on top of the valve cover do not have a gasket for them. Um, there's, there is no part number, so you have to basically make it out of RTV. What had happened previously, uh, the people who repaired this car basically smeared RTV uh, over the top of the valve covers and kind of mitigated some of the, the oil leakage out of there. But uh, it was a very rushed job. So uh, it ended up leaking progressively worse over time. Um, and my car leaks probably about uh, about three quarts, I want to say, every three months, probably about a quart a month, more, a little bit, probably a little bit more than that. Um, so basically what I've been doing is I've just been uh, keeping pouring oil in and just changing the filters because essentially there's really no need for me to uh, empty out the oil and change it because the car is uh, evacuating the oil uh, by itself <laughs> basically because of the uh, the valve covers are not sealed correctly so I'm gonna start doing the prep work for getting this job ready uh, for tomorrow so let's let's see what's all involved I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna rinse it down. You can see it better now. Just smeared our TV on there. I'm also gonna be re replacing the uh, intake manifold and spark plugs while I'm here. So under here, I can't really see it. I gotta take this off. Yeah, you can see some of it uh, there. Our TV, it's loose right here, so this needs to be uh, redone. You can just tell there's a lot of uh, oil here. There's a lot of, even though I cleaned it off, you can see the concentration of oil gunk. That just means that there's a uh, there's a leak there. There's something seeping. And I'm also going to be replacing the uh, valve cover gaskets as well. So this is going to be uh, quite quite a quite a big job for me not that hard but uh, it's, it's quite a bit of work alright so we've already washed the engine now we're gonna put I'm gonna put two bottles of the uh, LA awesome in there let it run for 20 minutes and then we're gonna drain the oil and we're gonna get started on disassembly let's do it
So now we got to take off the undercarriage guard. What's on this car? It's four eight millimeter bolts. going to be a lot of fluid that's going to come out from uh, when I washed it, when I washed the motor. So this is the tools that I'm going to be using. Star Torx bits and uh, whatever these are called, star sockets. This is 90% of uh, what's going to take apart the motor. Plus I got some metrics, um, hex, hex bits, uh, some 16 point deep sockets and some other, uh, some of these star bits. This one I twisted, though. That one, can't really see it. I twisted that one. And then my prized possession. The $30 snap-on, what is this, T, T30, titanium. Woo! Best couple pieces of advice I can give you for working on your own car like this. First of all, have the right tools. Or have tools that are good enough. Secondly, if you're replacing a, not a major part, but almost, uh, you know, kind of a pretty, pretty big part that you're unfamiliar with, you are going to want to go to a U-Pull junkyard. You are going to bring as much tools as you can because you don't know if you haven't done it before or unless you haven't done the research which tools you're going to need to take it out of the car. Go to the junkyard with an ample amount of the correct tools. Remove the part that you are going to replace from the junkyard even if you do not need the part. You're never going to go into a U-Pull and pay junkyard and somebody's gonna say, hey, you're taking apart that car. Nobody's gonna say that. Or hey, you broke that bolt on that car. Never gonna happen in a you pull and pay junkyard. That's why it's the perfect environment for people that are unfamiliar with certain parts of their car. And if you can find your car in a junkyard, pull the part, see what it all entails, see all the steps that it involves. Even if you don't know every step, you can just wing it along the way and then you can figure it out. Okay, this is what I have to do to take this apart. So the reverse is going to need to happen for me to put it back together and then torque it to spec if it needs to be torqued to spec. So that's the best, one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you. Also, the second piece of advice when you're doing something like this on your car, take a lot of pictures. That way, when you're going to reassemble something, as long as you've taken enough pictures along the way, you can look back at those pictures and see where things go. That's the, that's the best two pieces of advice I can give anybody that's trying to start to work on their own car and figure things out for themselves. Go to the junkyard, take the piece off, and put it back on maybe, and then take a lot of pictures when you're doing it on your own car before you take it apart. 
That way you can look at those pictures. Let's get started. So check it out, another pro tip. Having your bolts as you take them off, punch a hole in the cardboard, piece of cardboard, label each bolt in sections. These are gonna be all the fuel rail bolts. They're gonna be all in this section that uh, hold the fuel rail together. This is the bolt for the vacuum pump. This is the bolt for the uh, intake manifold not the intake manifold, the uh, intake tubing, piping, and then the uh, oil dipstick right here. Oil dipstick. Oil dipstick, intake tubing, vacuum pump, fuel rail, and as I progress, it's going to get progressively longer. That way, I know which bolts go where. mistaken the kit for the vacuum hoses is this piece here that plugs into here and then this the T this smaller piece and quite possibly this piece here that I broke maybe that would be that would be nice And then this is this is why I'm taking apart the. Uh, I kind of jerry rigged the uh, nipple off of the brake booster to the brake booster because that's a piece that's uh, it's plastic and it breaks. And I screwed in a threaded piece and I ended up uh, cracking the case slightly. So I've always had a slight vacuum leak because of that. So now. So now I, I uh, have a solution. I think I have a solution. We're gonna find out.
right, so I vacuumed it out. It's not, some of it's not 100% like in there. Uh, you can tell though that uh, definitely oil's been uh, sitting in here and collecting. Like right there, there's that huge, oh my God, man, it's just, it's just grime. It's grime in there. From sand uh, working its way through the engine, driving on dirt roads. And uh, that in combination with the oil leak, um, it just makes, it just collects, it uh, collects there. So I, I probably can do a little bit better job cleaning that up. Uh, my main focus was to actually, can't see in there. I'm going to get the snake cam in there, endoscope. I'm going to endoscope these and just look, look a little closer with the endoscope. But uh, I got these clean and then I'm going to have to clean the surface really well and then swap over parts on these two intake manifolds. So this is the one I took out of the car which uh, this sensor needs to come off, these hoses need to come off, uh, the throttle body needs to come off and then it needs to get put onto this one. Yeah, so I have the problem uh, that basically uh, started to it started to go bad. So I I, I spliced these together here, um, and then also the main reason is this right here messed up on me. Well, it broke. I tried to fix it, put something else in here, kind of didn't work. So my solution is uh, I bought this fitting from Home Depot. JB welded this piece in here and uh, for that I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, if the JB weld will I'm, I've heard a lot of stories of JB weld but I haven't really used it myself too much I just usually replace the part uh, but this is kind of an annoying part where you have to buy this plug that goes in here it's like three different pieces and it's about like sixty dollars or something like that and then uh, this uh, this piece is basically unreplaceable. Um, so Mercedes wants you to buy a brand new intake manifold for five, six, seven hundred bucks, depending on where you go. So I pulled this out of a junkyard for forty bucks. I disassembled this whole piece uh, off camera. I put the this is a brand new vacuum line that I ran up in there to the nipple inside of this chamber here after I took the plenums out of this intake manifold and I plug that into the nipple I put RTV on it and then I I tightened up a zip tie really tight on it and then I sealed uh, the bottom part with a bunch of RTV and I think I think that'll hold this is for me this is really uh, kind of a little bit of a tester experiment to see uh, which combination of these things work um, so I'm not really sure you know if uh, this is gonna hold up I'm hoping it's gonna last a little while um, if not I'm gonna have to uh, go back to the drawing board and figure out another way because um, it just doesn't make any sense to me of, of uh, buying an intake manifold a brand new intake manifold because this vacuum hose breaks it just uh, doesn't make sense to me five hundred dollars anyway it's kind of a little well outrageous Looks like there was some uh, 
there was some gasket sealer on this, which I would have thought there would be. Eh. Doesn't look too bad. Not too bad. Definitely could use a uh, a little bit of cleaning up. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray this piece down, clean this, uh, clean this up as as well as we can. Oh wow! Look at So this looks like the gray RTV. I am going to be using uh, red RTV, this stuff, on uh, everything because it's got a uh, higher temp than the black or the gray. Um, and I, I think that this, this will work. So I can see since I pulled this out that there's a indention similar to this uh, top piece when I took this apart. There was an indention on the uh, inner inner part as well. So uh, on the top part anyway. Then it looks like there's some little bit of uh, debris in here. I probably want to try and get this uh, cleaned out, like fish a uh, needle in there or something. Spray it out a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna clean this up. Clean this up, put some RTV on it, tighten it all back together. It's time to switch our attention to the cleaning of the top of the engine and masking off the intake manifold. So, I have taped off the intake plenums. I'm going to clean out this gunk in here. Let's get it Poppin'. Pretty good. I mean, that's acceptable, I think. Clean it out pretty well. So here, here's what leads me to believe that it's leaky breathers. So this is the breather here, and then you see all this residue basically fall out from this seam right here. So I believe that would be the majority of my oil leak. So I'm gonna find out that in conjunction with the uh, valve cover gaskets. 
So far, this is my bolts that I've taken off. Valve cover is still, I had to take this one off to get uh, this fitting off, which is I think part of the, I don't think it's, it might be the fuel, part of the f fuel system, not 100% sure. But uh, look, everything's, you know, everything's ready. I left a note here for myself. Passenger uh, coil packs, the top wire is the right plug. Driver it, top wire is the left plug because they're reverse. So this is what I'm referring to as the top wire on each of the coil packs. And on one side it's the right plug and on the other side it actually is the left plug. So that's uh, this note here with these bolts actually makes it real easy for me. I know this is from the tube that goes into the intake manifold this piece right here because I created a diagram right there that lets me know hey these are the two bolts that go into this this thing here not that hard then I have my coil packs here I have the intake piping there vacuum pump here a couple other pieces here tools yeah some of the stuff that's gonna go back in I've already reassembled the um, the whole tubing that connects uh, the I think it's oil recirculation I'm not sure so I have the valve cover gaskets here well it's getting a little dirty but it's uh, not gonna get contaminated I think I have two choices the valve covers do need to come off, 100%. The spark plugs do need to get changed, 100%. So right now I'm flip-flopping between whether I should take the spark plugs out and do those now, or I should take the valve covers off and do those now. I think, I think I'm gonna go with the spark plugs. Old, new. They don't look too bad at all. You can tell though some of the tip is worn off. It's a lot of condensation. So that's where the condensation's sitting. It's resting there. <laughs> it's kind of bad. Let me try and get a good bend on this. Oh, I see what's going on. It's at a mad angle. So now. We're looking at the piston, the top of the piston.
So since we're in the same cylinder, we're going to endoscope the other side just to have a look. See. Oh, oh I need to turn on the light. Let there be light. Man, these these spark plugs are at like a crazy angle, man. Hmm. I'm hoping that that is an indention for the intake valves. I can't quite get the camera to roll over the, uh, another direction to see if there's a corresponding one on the other side. That looks that looks a little gnarly though. Hmm. I am not sure. So this is the first park spark plug of the second cylinder going back this way. So we're here now. A lot of oil. Similar to the other spark plug. I'm going to say the only way oil could have got on this spark plug is because of the valve cover. Valve cover gasket seeping spark plugs like this valve cover gasket is just slowly seeping and it it will actually cling and wick and go inside uh, there so I think that's what that is and of course endoscope is ready We are going in. Huh, I wonder if there's something on the front. Oh yeah, there's oil. Whoopsie! Try that again. Ah, oh, so I see. 
this piston is down way further. So that's why. Okay, yeah, so those indentions are part of the... Man, this piston looks way more cleaner than the other one. Damn! Yeah, so those indentions, there it is right there. That's for the uh, lifters. Not the lifters, the uh, umtag valves. <laughs>
And we're gonna endoscope. Endoscope. That it? No, that's something else. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Found it. Oh, a lot of, a lot of junk on here. Come on. Oh, there we go. Damn, it's very difficult to uh, look around. Alright, guess that looks okay. Can't really, the uh, the cord for this camera is definitely binding up on the uh... Tell you what though. This spark plug socket does not want to come off. It's good. It's good and it's bad. It's good when you're going to put it in and take it out, and it's bad just when you want to take the socket off. <laughs> After you tighten the spark plug up. That seems like the number one issue. Scope. See if I can get a better, better look. This, this one. Come on. Man, this, this is very. Easy in theory. A little bit tricky to execute. I'm right there. Let me in. There we go. We are in. Cannot see 
anything. There we go. Got some crud on here, I know it. Yeah. Oh, that's the other one. So the number one problem with this engine anyway to endoscope the cylinders they're at such an angle that they pull up uh, fluids right at the threads of the spark plug. So that makes it difficult There we go. I think we're in. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Uh... Oh, there we go. We can see. A little better. Doesn't look too bad. It's okay. Man, that trick works, man. Cutting that boot. Best thing I ever did. This is a new cylinder, so this is the last time I'm gonna endoscope. And wipe it off. Got this thing dirty, man. It's all gunk. Not bad. Surprisingly clean. So overall, not bad. Uh, from from the little bit, you, I can see obviously. I mean, this is I, unless I had that snake cam, I wouldn't even be able to see this stuff. So.
that's the problem right there. Look at that. That's one of the problems. Something caused this uh, breather to corrode. Wow, that's a shame. I'm gonna have to order that. I mean, overall though, it's not that bad. It's a little bit of a uh, milkiness here. But uh, overall, these these this is uh this is pretty clean. I'm not sure what's the deal with the bulging of the rubber on the cam gears. There's the master link though, right where it should be. On the mark. Hmm. Yeah, the cam... I don't know what's up with that. I didn't know that they had a rubber, uh coating around them. Hmm. Well, looks like I need to order a, uh, not a valve cover, but I don't know if I can just order the breather. But I'm definitely, I can't, I can't put that back on there. Not like that. That's horrible. You can see this is deformed. The metal has just melted away and there's actually a pit right there. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Look at the look at how deformed it is. That's pretty deformed. This is metal, okay? This isn't uh this isn't plastic. I mean it's not like a great I think it's like a pot metal. But, uh, there's some type of, something, something happened to this. There's corrosion. There's some type, something ate. Something, somebody, at one point in time, somebody poured something on this. I want to say marotic acid. Someone poured marotic acid on here to clean this motor up. And it, they left it on. And it started pitting different parts of the uh, the metal. All right. So just to make sure, since I definitely know that whole valve cover over there needs to be replaced, driver side, which is a shocker for me so I thought I was just gonna seal them up and put them back together today now I gotta tomorrow I'm gonna have to plan a trip to the junkyard and hopefully find a car that has this motor in it and pull off the valve covers while I'm at it I'm gonna snag another ignition coil with uh, the wires because uh, that one ignition coil that had that corroded connection, which was never plugged in correctly, I guess, from whoever. Not that bad. If 
passenger side. Timing mark there with the and I can't can't get a focus on it. There it is. I mean, not bad. All right, so we are back from you pulling pay. This is the valve cover I got. Coil pack with ignition wires. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I think it will. I took this fuel line off of a newer one because mine is uh, cracking. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, my reservoir tank that's currently in my car, this nipple is actually cracked right here. So I took this out of a, I believe it was a 1998 C280, 230, 280, 280 I think, yeah. Not sure, <clears throat> couldn't find it. Uh, the ones in the newer cars um, were different. Um, a lot of different cars that I looked at. This was only I was able to find these in uh, the C280s, basically, uh, the older ones. Any of the newer cars had a uh, slightly larger overflow tank that was mounted a different way, and they just wouldn't work in my car. So this one's in really good shape. So I'm kind of kind of stoked that I, I was able to find that. And uh, this, this valve cover is an exact match and looks to be in pretty good shape, although I still need to redo, um, clean everything and redo the uh, rebreather, of course, and then get these mounted. So I'm stoked. Got this off for 39, roughly 39, I think, dollars out the door. Not bad. So what we're going to do now is loosen up the rebreathers, or the breathers.
going to put one oh we are just snugging these up a little bit There we go. Yeah, it looks good. Later on, uh, we're gonna actually torque that to spec. Probably tomorrow. We're gonna let that fully cure dry, and then we're gonna torque it to spec, which I found out uh, seems to be eight Newton meters, which seems about right. There is a little remnants here and there of the old black RTV, but I cleaned it out well enough that it shouldn't hinder the performance of any of the new RTV that I'm putting in there. It's literally millimeters of uh, little bits that I just uh, it was a real pain in the butt to scrape it out. I scraped out about 99%. There's just a couple little pieces clinging here and there. If you can see some of them. So... These holes were sealed. Well, whoever did this, this is the this is the valve cover I took off of the car from the junkyard. These, as you can see, there's some remnants in there. I'll try and fish it out. There we go. Right there. <laughs> Man, this stuff's really clinging. I really don't think that you need to seal these holes, but erring on the side of caution, I am going to dab a little bit around the edges of all these little um, bolt holes here after I RTV this up.
never seen anybody do this. Um, these, and I, I, I don't really think it's necessary, but, you know, I don't want to do this again. Well, not before it's time anyway. So, that looks pretty good. This looks clean. I'm going to go ahead and mate these surfaces up. Make sure it falls nicely. Yeah, I mean, I feel good about that. And once again, I'm going to put some, just two, and snug it up. Then we're going to come back tomorrow and torque it, torque the rebreathers. So these are enough. The instructions say to let this um, put the RTV on, mate the pieces together, let it sit for an hour, then torque it to spec. So I'm going to let it sit for longer than an hour. And then I am going to torque them the spec tomorrow. Now I'm going to clean off the passenger side valve cover gasket area. So I did want to check the timing chain stretch, but I do not see the setting for it on uh, this cam. What I also do want to do is put this snake cam in here. And just kind of uh, look around. There's my timing chain rail. Right there. I believe that's the timing chain guide rail. One of them. Yep, this one. Let's see. Where's that? This.
Almost got this bad boy stuck in there. That wouldn't have been good. Got to be careful with this thing. So that is the crankshaft uh, sprocket. And that, I forgot what that other chain is for. I wonder if that's loose or is that how much space there's supposed to be? in between those links together. That, that looks kind of loose. Not 100% sure. Overall, it doesn't look bad. broken pieces or anything so uh my snake cam the other side real quick Not bad. I mean, I just wanted to poke around. Gingerly, gently, hopefully.
There we go. Gonna get out our bolts. Valve cover passenger right here. So overall not bad, I think. Looks pretty good. Let's see what we got. That is the top part facing in towards the intake manifold. This is gonna be hard to get this part, but bottom part not bad not bad I think I think that'll work give that all all uh, time to set up for an hour hopefully it's not storming I'm supposed to be getting really bad storms uh, shortly so I don't want to rush this, but I don't want these exposed, not covered in a storm. So I'm trying to get this done reasonable fashion. All right, let's see. Driver's side. Definitely needed to be changed. I believe if they have the small Mercedes star stamped on it, they're OEM. Not 100%, but my other gaskets are exactly look exactly the same. So, uh, I think they might be OEM, hopefully. So, while I'm waiting, this I believe is for the throttle positioning sensor on the throttle body. The wire loom has cracked 
a lot of it has broken away I've broken off the little bit that was remaining I'm gonna wipe the cord down get some of the oil off some alcohol just to clean it up a little bit back at the rebreather We're going to put some blue thread lock on it. Eight Newton meters is supposed to be the spec, I think, from what I could find. This torque wrench is kilograms so according to what I found one kilogram equals eight Newton meters so let's see so that says it's eight Newton meters or I got to set to two kilograms Still seems kind of loose, but not finger loose. So I guess, I guess that's it. We're going to address this problem Can't see it, huh? But this wire the, uh, This one The loom has dried up and cracked I'm not sure what sensor or piece of the car that that cluster of wire goes to but it looks like I'm going to have to remove the alternator down here because it tucks in behind where the alternator's at. And uh, I'm going to try and loom it and chase it as far as it'll go. Looks like we just broke the end off of uh, this, so I'm going to need to get another, the secondary 
not sure what it's, the name is, the secondary for the uh, alternator. And it has sunken into the back and it's cockeyed on the alternator. So I've been having slight charging issues. So maybe that has something to do with uh, this piece coming loose or not being adhered to the back of the alternator properly. So I have a spare alternator, so no big deal. go that's what that bolts cockeyed see it not sure what happened there I do not think that part itself is replaceable I'll find out That's real weird. Guess I just uh, had it. That sucks, so they just put new brushes on here. Oh well. Maybe I can get the back of this rebuilt. like it is part of the wiring that feeds into the bottom of the engine also that secondary lead or whatever the uh, smaller wire is on the alternator the eyelet that I broke right there so it swoops down around here let me take the camera off comes from here, swoops down around, runs in between the alternator bracket and the alternator, then loops back, then goes underneath down here, and then it's wire tied into here, and splits out of here. Not sure where the other wires go, there's a couple other wires feeding into some sensors on the motor, but I definitely know one of them is the uh, I want to call that the secondary lead for the alternator. I'm not sure what it is though. I'm not sure what the official name is. So yeah, we're gonna uh, gonna reloom that wire for sure. What I did here, I took a wire, got an eyelet, put the eyelet, crimped it on the wire, then crimped a speaker wire connector to the other end. Then the end that I broke off of the main harness, I crimped 
this speaker wire connector so this will plug into here so that way when I go when I have to disconnect the alternator again I don't have to risk loose tightening and retightening that small bolt again because I sheared it off of the other one I don't want I want to lower the chances of that happening so uh, I think that will be a good solution the only thing I'm worried about is uh, I wanted to get barrel like barrel connectors that have the uh, sheath the plastic the rubber sheath over them but uh, I can't find mine I had them somewhere so I have these uh, speaker connectors and I just see how long those will last I'm sure that the weather will start corroding these after a while but I think it'll work for possibly you know a couple few months so I'm gonna put the alternator back in I loomed the wire harness and zip tied this back where it's supposed to go that runs underneath the alternator there So we have all the holes lined up here, the gaskets look good. We're going to start putting the bolts in.
All right, I think uh, it's put together. I think now it's time to prime the fuel system. Start it up, shall we? I still need to monitor everything, uh, let it idle a little bit. Drive it a little bit, make sure the fuel is not leaking anywhere, all the connections are tight. I think I I swapped one of these coil packs from this side over to that side, so the wires need to be swapped around. The rest of the intake box needs to be put in. But uh, it's running pretty good, so I'm happy with that. Uh, time is going to tell whether or not the gaskets or the breathe I think the breathers are fine and then uh, we're gonna monitor the gaskets over time to see if the gaskets start to develop the uh, valve cover gaskets see if they start to develop a leak or not but yeah mission success it worked so far I just got to monitor everything and make sure no problems arise, so I'll, I'll take progressively longer and longer trips, and the more and more I monitor the car and see that it's not malfunctioning, then uh, I'll give it a clean bill of health. So far, so good. Everything looks great. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Replace the intake manifold. Also kind of fix the intake manifold. Rebreather valve cover and valve cover gaskets themselves broke and fixed the alternator wire we swapped out the alternator with the spare that I had man we did a lot of stuff we banged out a lot of stuff I'm still throwing a code I'm not sure what the code is yet because my uh, code scanner broke so we're going to order another code scanner the USB piece and um, USB dongle or the OBD2 Bluetooth dongle, and uh, then we're gonna see what the codes are that are coming up. I don't think I have a misfire. Code. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a residual code that's still in the computer. I'm not sure. The last code I had before I did this was uh, P0400, which was a general vacuum leak code. So we'll probably have to do some hunting, maybe, and see if something else maybe has went bad that uh, that uh, I didn't find or replace. But that's. I basically took off all the vacuum lines and uh, looked at everything and everything looked okay. So I'm not sure what the code is, but yeah, I'm happy so far. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Woo!